Well, we're in Manitoba on a big marsh. And what's so cool about this, we're hunting over wooden hand-carved decoys. I mean, this is just, I mean, it's just nostalgic. And the neat thing about Manitoba, eight duck limit, and this is a place where diver duck hunting is alive and well, where you don't have to worry about shooting one bluebill or two canvas backs or two redheads. It's just a really cool opportunity. I can't wait to experience this week. We're up with bird tail outfitters, and it's not that far over the border. We're only four hours north of Devil's Lake where I live, but just a whole different world up here. Uh, coming though. Oh, oh my oh, gosh, oh, oh, oh. that's gold. You know, hunting's always a little bit better if there's just a little bit of adventure. <laughs> you know, so getting out to this diver spot, you know, we've all got a skiff and we're going through with the shallow water mud motors, going through the cattails and, you know, getting high centered where we'd have to get out of our skiff and in our waders, we'd push the boat over some high spots. You know, it was just, a, just an adventure getting into this place, you know, and, and we went quite a ways. I mean, it took us probably 45 minutes driving across a marsh, crossing beaver dams, you know, getting up through these cattails and bogs, you know, to get up into this marsh. And uh, it was just part of the adventure and made it such a cool trip. You gotta wonder, like, when is the last time a duck hunter has ever been here? It's just a, a special opportunity. So this is a bit of a special spot where we, we hunt. We don't hunt very often. And it's pretty much a divers only hunt. And it's, it's a bit of a trek to get in, but it's kind of part of the experience. So we use these, they're basically a shallow drive, six and a half horse, uh, little mud motor made by PPF on a Four Rivers layout boat. Just an awesome combo. And the way we were coming in today, we just, some of the channel was blocked off by floating cattails. So we just kind of went around, scooted through some shallow stuff, which got us into this spot where no one goes into. So it's kind of a, pristine spot to hunt divers here but what we're hunting over is basically their hand carved decoys by a fellow named Joe Brewer. It's a cork body balsam head with a walnut keel and they're just absolutely beautiful the way they roll through the waves and whatnot. Birds just they really finish on them. That's what we're hunting. It's a wicked spot. We've got a lot of bluebills, um, ringnecks, canvasback, buffalo head. Just a real classic diver hunt. It's a lot of fun. Right side low. Oh, nice. <laughs> that was pretty. That huh? was beautiful. Boy, a person's got to bring a lot of ammo for this. Beautiful Drake bluebill. That's a real pretty bird. That's Amazing. like something you'd see on a calendar, you know what? Yeah. It might curl. Those are golden eyes. You want to shoot those. Those are kind of cool. You don't see them very often here. Get ready. That's it. More in front. Oh. See how far behind? Don't yeah. come back. It's crazy, eh? Trying to load up fast enough. Right here. Oh yeah, nice shot. Oh man, this one's beautiful. On the right here, on the right. Shoot. <laughs> you never brag about your kids, your dog, or your shooting when you when you when you go hunt buffalo heads and bluebills. <laughs> A wise man once told me. <laughs> oh, right here, right here, on the right.
Now, now. Wow, this is just incredible. Left side, right, left, here, side. right here, right here. Left side, left side. Oh my goodness. Just rockets, I didn't even shoot at that one. <laughs> you get in the right spot, you know, with diver ducks in, it is chaos. You know, these birds come screaming by, I mean, like rockets. I mean, the, I've heard before, you know, the canvas backs in particular, they're one of the fastest birds in the air. I mean, when they get on a, in a tailwind, I mean, they, they are fast. And so, you know, the thing about diver ducks is you're gonna burn some shells, you're gonna waste some shells, you're gonna make some shots that you feel really good about. <laughs> but it is unbelievable how difficult it can be to hit these birds, you know, they're screaming by so fast. I mean, half the day is just getting your lead figured out. You know, once you get your lead figured out, you know, your, your shooting percentage is going to go up a little bit, but yeah, I'll tell you what, uh, don't ever brag after you make a great shot because your next shot might be absolutely humiliating, and uh, you never brag about your shooting when it comes to divers because I tell you what, these, I think these birds will humble most people. Uh, right side? Uh, coming low. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, now, now. Oh, oh my oh, gosh! Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> <Woo -hoo! laughs> That's gold! Love that it. was beautiful, wasn't it? Left side, left side, left side. Now, oh, now, now. Oh! Oh, oh the, the skipper! Long dart too. Look at the Look feathers! At the feathers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right up top here, right over the top. Oh, right side. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice and low. 80 yards. In, 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 in. Shoot, 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 shoot. <laughs> Get one of volley. I guess that's one all you can hope for. <laughs> I love this. Golly, they come in fast. This is so much fun. <laughs> oh. Okay, so where we are, this is a pretty special spot for divers. But they love coming here because there's a lot of good food. And this is what we think they eat quite a bit. Um, it's like all these, these little new growth shoots that, you know, comes off of here. We call them coontail, and I think they also pull roots. But uh, this year is a little different just because we had so much water this spring. I think the water, water temps were cool early or stayed cool and then, um, were, you know, obviously kind of flooded. So we didn't get a lot of, a, you know, invertebrates. Usually this is just a chock full of shrimp, but this year there's just not a lot of shrimp. But this, this is great food for them. But what these birds do is they kind of, they come to this one spot late in the evening. Um, and they kind of hit all these tiny little lakes around us, but they all kind of congregate here for like what, the last feed. So that's kind of what we're hunting. Straight in front. Those are working. Watch these. Let them work in, let them work in. Nice, get that nice one. Yeah. Beautiful. That was pretty All of them, wasn't it? Together. <laughs> one more, one more coming in. <laughs> oh. We're on now. <laughs> Takes a little while to get the swing down, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at them all. See, see, they're all coming in from those lakes now. Uh, it's pretty cool we're hunting it uh you get all these different you know species of uh of divers be a, you know gold knight of ring necks and blue bills and buffalo heads canvas backs and just it's so neat to to see them all and they're actually right right now it's you know mid to late october and they're starting to get all their full plumage so it's actually kind of fun to try to pick out drakes and stuff like that and see how many species you can get kind of you know because not everywhere you do get all those 
you know, species of divers. So it's, it's kind of fun to do it. Yep, coming in hot. You know, there's some really historic and renowned diver duck marshes in Manitoba. You know, you look at the Delta Marsh, that's a famous place. But, you know, there's these big shallow lakes up here that are just full of aquatic vegetation. They're full of invertebrates, and they just get these massive migrations of divers that come through here. You know, you're looking at your buffleheads, your bluebills, ringnecks, your redheads, canvasbacks, golden eyes, mergansers. I mean, there's just a lot of birds that come through here that use these big diver marshes. And so it's it's really a historical hunting opportunity. And what's really neat about diver duck hunting is, in my mind, it's just it's just the nostalgicness of diver duck hunting. You, know, you look at the federal duck stamps that have had diver ducks, you look at the old pictures, the old market hunting memoirs of hunting diver ducks. Maybe it's canvasbacks and the wild celery in the Chesapeake Bay, or maybe it's divers on St. Clair. And, you know, the old stories of these market hunters that would put birds on train cars and ship them to restaurants in Chicago back in the day and, you know, the, the era of punt guns and using live decoys, you know, and, and a lot of that revolved around diver duck hunting. And unfortunately, diver duck hunting is almost becoming a lost art in the sense that, you know, you look at the, the attention that mallards get and the Canada geese and you look across the country places like Michigan, Wisconsin, places where there was this rich history of hunting diver ducks. Now you look at the waterfall hunting community in those locations today, and they're hunting golf course geese, you know? And so the waterfall hunting industry has really changed and it's, it's evolved over time. And in some ways, I really feel like the, the diver ducks have been kind of left out of that evolution in the sense that, you know, fewer people are doing it and it just seems like it's just becoming less of a focus in the industry. And that's unfortunate because you look at the history, you look at the, the nostalgicness of diver ducks, you know, you think of duck hunting, you know, a, a stiff wind at your back, gray day, clouds rolling through, you know, wind blowing across the water and lines of ducks racing past the decoys. You know, to me, that's the essence of waterfall hunting. And that's what diver duck hunting is. And so it's neat to come to areas where you can almost imagine what it used to be like. You know, coming up here to Manitoba, hunting over hand carved cork decoys that are just beautiful. The bottom of your skiff is covered in empty shotgun shells. The barrel of your shotgun is so warm, you can warm up your hands and you've got these lines of ducks racing by and it's just chaos. You know, you can almost imagine as you're sitting there, you can almost imagine what it must have been like, you know, during some of those times where people market hunted, where people, you know, shot canvas backs out of sink boats and sent them by rail car to Chicago to a fine restaurant. You know, it's just, it's just a historical aspect that uh, for me as a waterfall hunting, it was very moving. Yep. This is fun. <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah. Oh, skip. Right side, right side, right side. Oh, Whoa, yeah! Oh, did you see that? Uh, lots of birds on the left. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Bunch of them on the left. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this, this right here, right here. 
Left, left, left. In front, too. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> I know I didn't bring enough shells. Right side, coming in. Oh, oh. Oh, those guys. Oh, left side. Oh, he's cupped in, coming right through his channel. It's gonna be tight now. Ooh. Ooh. Bringing him on. I started guiding probably when I was about 19, 20. And uh, it was just one of those things I just fell in love with, loved to hunt and fish as a kid. My dad worked for Ducks Unlimited. And so I kind of grew up in that, in that Ducks Unlimited world. Just the, I don't know, the fantasy of all the biologists on the prairies, you know, back in the eighties and seventies kind of thing. It was just, I don't know, it really touched me. So as a kid, that's all I did. I hunted and fished, you know, grew up in the city, but I fished every day and as much as we could get out to hunt and then got of age kind of thing. And I just got into guiding and then never stopped. Just guided pretty much year round. And uh, I was in my early twenties and I was guiding waterfowl for a fella and he, he helped me get into the industry. And uh, we built this business together and, and I purchased them after a five year deal that we had and then just kind of tried to grow it to where really where I wanted it to be. And today, I'm, I don't know, we got a, a great thing going. People are enjoying what we're doing and we're in probably one of the best places in, in North America I know of, the Prairie Pothole region. It's, it's incredible. There's so much water, so much great agriculture with peas and oats and barley and then tons of upland habitat you know there's easements getting put on a lot of quarters around here by docks limited and purchase quarters it's neat like delta has their you know their, their predator management in the area to try to aid the the hatch every year like it's neat to watch this both organizations just just pedal of the metal trying to do these birds right like it's pretty cool and then be able to outfit in the area is just next level Single. Oh, right, 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 right. Bluebells. Yeah. Woo! Right here. Right side, right side, right side. Now, 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 now. Hey, yeah. great, well done, great gentlemen. hunt. That was... Wow, huh? Oh, that was out. great. That's bird tail for you right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so much fun. The Argentina of the North, huh? The amount of birds that are going home with people right now is is amazing. I think the whole art of you know wild game cooking has kind of come back, and and I think people are realizing how, how good these birds taste, especially like you know divers like a you know they, I think the nickname is what a butterball for a bluebill. You know the, that beautiful fat layer on top is just amazing, and it's it's funny a lot of people I find in the lodger you know, I don't know, starting to share recipes and stuff like that to where it's, it's, it's kind of, it feels like it's coming back. You know, the, the art of eating wild game, like it's, it's, it is pretty cool. And we've, we've got some great recipes from you know, some of the people who've been up this year. But it's really nice to see that, 
you know, it just, it's, people are eating more birds.